another hand. They are singing today. Amen. As we prepare for the sermon, I'm going to read our scripture one more time, and then our pastor will come. Again, the scripture comes from Matthew chapter 12, verses 46 through 50. While he was still speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brother were standing outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to speak with you. But to the one who had told him this, Jesus replied, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Getting your kung fu nunchuck pounder. Get it, my man. See how you get to do it. Get it, get it, my man. See how you get to do it. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, 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 buddy. I'm gonna whip the double. Uh huh, yeah. Shake it off, pony, shake it off. Yeah, that's right. I'm 58, 63 years old. I get on the side of my big girl truck. Y'all didn't know I could do it like that, did you? Tom ain't the only kung fu general in the building today. You're probably thinking, why on earth is this man coming out here in his outfit? Why does he have nunchucks in his hand? Why are we here today? Family and friends, we gather to talk about why we're here. How many folks got invited by somebody else here today? Okay. You got invited here today. How many folks came because your mama told you you had to come today? Come on, raise your hand, for real, be honest. Yep, my man got two hands up. Mama made him put on a tie. Mama made him come to church. Say you gotta come. There's something about family and friends. Family, family, these are the folks, you can't pick them. You sure would like to get rid of them sometime but you cannot pick them, amen? Now, mama made him come to church. I asked my Facebook friends, I said, y'all, what are some of the things that your mama would say to you when you were growing up? They gave me responses like this. They said when they were growing up, they heard things like, you can't go nowhere without somebody knowing that you my child. So you better act like somebody whenever you're outside. They heard things, young ladies heard things like, don't chase a man, if he wants you, he'll find you, amen? Somebody need to say that again today. Parents used to say things like, it doesn't matter what everybody else mama said, I'm your mama. I brought you into this world and what? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if y'all say this in Virginia, but where I'm from they say, you don't believe fat meat greasy. I still don't know what that means, but they said it. You don't believe fat meat greasy. Another thing they used to say is, stop trying to be nickel slick. When did a nickel get to be slick? And why am I trying to be nickel slick? These are things mama would say to us while they're making us come to church. They tell us ain't nothing good happening after 12 o'clock at night. And then the old folk would really say ain't nothing open after 2 a.m. but we ain't gonna say what. <laughs> Ladies, your mama would tell you don't ever come outside with hair rollers in your head. Some of y'all still do that, seen you at Walmart. Eat everything on your plate because we got starving children. Where? In Africa, who would love to have the food on your plate. Uh-huh. Before I let the police kill you, I'll kill you myself. Was I talking to you? This is a grown folks conversation. Uh-huh. You trying to go out with your friends? Mama want to know who is their people? Who they mama? Where they from? How many brothers and sisters they got? What's their auntie name? Do he got an aunt baby? Aunt baby, I know them. They from the west side of town. They from south side. These are the things mama would say. And she would say things like this because when you got older, she would tell you, before you get grown, as long as you in my house, everybody in here on Sunday morning is going where? To church. I don't care what you did on Friday. I don't care what you did on Saturday. I don't care how red your eyes are on Sunday morning. On Sunday morning, everybody in this house is going where? And when you get grown, you can do what you want to do. But my man, raise your two hands again. Come on, my man, come on, you're right there. You know I'm talking to you. You had two hands up. Put your two hands up. 
Yep, 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 yep. Mama told you today you're doing what? You going to church. And when we look at our scripture, we see Jesus. His mama, his brothers, his sisters came to see him. And somebody sent a messenger into the building and said, Jesus, your mama is here to see you, Jesus. And what did Jesus say? Who is my mother? Who is my brother? Except those who do what? The will of my father. Can I, can I share something with you real quick? I got real nervous for a six foot bearded grown Jesus when he decided when his mama called on him that he wasn't going to see what mama was doing. How many folks grown in the building still scared of your mama? I am. My mama ain't but five foot two, but she got arms like an octopus. And you don't know which way you're going to get hit first because she coming at you in all directions. And I just cannot imagine fixing my mouth if somebody sent somebody, if my mama sent my kids in there to get me and I'm going to fix my mouth to tell them who is my mama. What would your mama do to you if you came to her like that? Yeah, so you got to imagine what the people were thinking when they heard Jesus respond that way. But when we look at our text, we have to understand that there are several things happening here. And many of us have relationships with our family members, relationships with our friends. And some of those relationships become complex. And when we look at the body of the family, you have to understand that there are different types of family members. There are relatives and kinfolk. You know how those are. These are the folk that you only see at family reunions. You don't really know how y'all related. You don't know. You just know that they mama and your mama are first, second, or third cousins. Y'all grandparents may be related. Somehow, these are your relatives and your kinfolk. You only see them once in a while, and then you see them every couple of years, but you're not really that close with them. But then you have what we call play cousins. Anybody ever had play cousins growing up? Play cousins, these are the people you grew up with on the block. These are your homies, your road dogs. These are your ride or die. These are the ones that rode bikes with you, that played jump rope with you. They were always at your house. You were always at their house. They're your ace, your boom, your coon, but you don't trust them as far as you can throw them. Because they will steal your bike. They'll steal your money. They'll walk right in your house and steal everything you got. Play cousins. Somebody say relatives, kinfolk, and play cousins. But then we have what we call loved ones. That's mama. That's daddy. That's big mama. My dear, papa. Big boy. Whatever you call them. Whatever. These are your, your great aunties, your uncles. The ones that you knew whenever you were in trouble, they'd be there for you. The ones you knew that if you called on them, no matter what time of night, they'd pick up the phone. Nowadays, people get caller ID, and if they see your number on the caller ID, you be, and y'all laughing because you're the one with the caller ID. Some of the very family members you're sitting right next to call you, and you see that number on the caller ID, and you say, oh, Lord, it's Craig again. I ain't got it, Craig. I ain't got five, because you know what they're calling for. But what if God had caller ID on us? And when we went to call on him, after we had gotten on his nerves, when we went to call on him, after we had asked for money in our bank account because we messed ours up, after we asked him to pay our bills because we had too many credit cards, after we asked him for a brand new car and we didn't take care of the car that we had, what if God looked at the caller ID and said, I'm not picking up today because I'm tired of my family folk? We are being troubled, Deacon, because there's something about family. The God that we serve is a God that will never turn his back on his family members. The God that we serve is a God that will never turn a deaf ear to his children because look at you, put your hand on yourself and say, I'm his precious child. And then turn to your neighbor and say, he liked me more than he liked you. See, 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 you may not believe it, but I'm the favorite. I'm 
I'm the one he liked more than all of y'all. Y'all may not believe it. See, you looking at me like that ain't true. So you one of his favorites too? You can't be one of his favorites if I'm his favorite. So that means if you're his favorite and I'm his favorite, that means he got a lot of favor to go around. Anybody in the house need the favor of the Lord? The only way you can get that favor is if you're in the family. Somebody say family. The character of a family. With family members, they'll stick by you and you'll stick by them through thick and thin. You will want to choke them on Monday, push them down the stairs on Tuesday, steal their A check on Wednesday, but let somebody else talk about them. Let somebody else say something about my sister. Let somebody else talk about my brother, then we're going to have some consequences and repercussions because ain't nobody going to say nothing about my family member because God has placed us together. These are the folks that I grew up with. These are the folks that I love. These are the folks that I sit in a hot church with in the middle of April and lift up holy hands and tell God, thank you. I might not have been there for the last six months. I might not have been to church in the last year. I might not have the prettiest suit to put on. I may only have a Kung Fu outfit and some slippers, but thank God I'm here with my family. It don't matter what you got on. It don't matter where you've been last night. It don't matter what you're going through. You're here. And because you're here, you're a part of the family. And there are three things I want to talk about that describe the character of a true family. If you're taking notes, the character, somebody say the character, of a true family. A true family communicates. Somebody say communicates. First and foremost, they communicate with one another. How many husbands do I have in the building today? Raise your hand if you're a husband or a boyfriend or a uh, you know, common law or something, anything. Raise your hand. Come on. Come on. Keep your hands high. Come on. Raise them. Raise them. Raise them. Raise them. Raise them. Y'all not raising your hands. Lift your hands. Now, wives of these persons, look at them real good. Common law wife, girlfriend, sister friend, whatever you may be. If they don't communicate with you, is that going to be some trouble in the house? Yeah. Especially come around 10 o'clock when he's going to put his crusty feet on your leg. Now he want to talk to you because he's sleepy time. And we'll say sleepy time because it's clearly kids in the room. Now all of a sudden he want to communicate and he ain't talked to you all day long. It's going to be some problems. Family has to communicate. We have to tell each other what's going on. I've been telling folk all my life, I am not a mind reader. I don't know how you feel. I don't know what you're going through unless you tell me. And the beauty of being in the family, a true family, communicates with one another. Somebody said communicate. Not only do we communicate horizontally with one another, we communicate vertically with the Lord. The Bible says, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will do what? serve the Lord. So when my man put up his hands and said, mama told me to come to church, that's because as a family, we communicate to God vertically. Amen. When we talk to one another, that's horizontal communication. But when you switch that thing around and you got to pray for your children, because when they go to school, you don't know if they're going to be shot. You got to pray for your children because you don't know if they're going to be bullied. You have to pray for your children because you don't know if they're going to make it home from the bus stop. But somebody said, thank God for vertical communication. Because when I begin to pray to God and communicate within my family relationship with me, what God does is provide a hedge of protection all around my babies, all around my wife, all around my, my, your husband, your children, and we communicate horizontally with one another, but we communicate vertically with God. And then when God protects us, we communicate globally with the world because the Bible says, go ye therefore and do what? Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the who? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So after we communicate with one another and we communicate with God, we then communicate to the world that God is good. When was the last time you told somebody what God has done in your life? 
just a few minutes ago. Some of y'all, we come to church and we look forward to testimony service because we know somebody is going to tell something good about what happened in their life. Before you leave here today, I need everybody to tell somebody one thing. Matter of fact, just lean over and tell your neighbor one good thing God has done for you this week. Come on, tell somebody what God has done for you. Did he keep you? Did he save you? Did he make a way for you? Did he do something that you couldn't? Somebody ought to be shouting right about now because you're talking about how good God is. And we tell the world how good he is to us because he does things for us that we cannot do for ourselves. Somebody said the character of a true family. A true family communicates, but a true family also cooperates. Somebody say cooperates. That means a true family works together for the greater good of the group. Nehemiah 4 and 6, and we studied Nehemiah as we came together as pastor and people back in October. Nehemiah 4 and 6 says, so we rebuilt the wall, and the wall was joined together at half its height, for the people had a mind to work. Someone say that, for the people had a mind to work. I don't care how many bodies we have in this building. If the people don't have a mind to work, we ain't never going to get nothing done. One of the challenges of being in a family unit, and y'all know how this goes, you're getting ready to raise money because it's your daddy's 65th birthday. And everybody is supposed to contribute $100 to the birthday. Yep, 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 yep. It's six of y'all. Everybody give they hundred dollars. We'll have six hundred dollars. That's enough for us to get the cake, get all the food, buy daddy a nice present. What's gonna happen three days for the birthday? Yep, yep. Which one of y'all? Some of y'all don't know what's gonna happen because it's you who ain't got no money. You're the one who don't show up with your hundred dollars. And now the rest of us got to figure out why we got to come up with another $20 a piece. And then you get to the birthday party and you the one on the microphone crying, oh, how much we love daddy. And daddy, you done done so much for us, daddy. And you always deaf us, so us do this party for you. And eat up all the food. And go in the kitchen and get one of them long lasagna pans and fill it up and take it home and ain't put no money on it. Every family has these situations. Even in the church. Cooperation is key if we want to get anything done in this church. Swansboro family friends, members, visitors, do you know what we could do to turn the south side on its ear if we cooperated together? Do you realize the lives that we could change? Do you realize the people that we could feed? Do you realize the people that we could clothe? Do you realize the people that we could get jobs and training and GED if we just cooperated? got rid of our own agenda, got rid of our own thoughts, our own feelings, our own programs, and cooperate. To cooperate means to combine our efforts. That means don't hate on Sister Johnson because her baby had enough sense to get A's and B's and go to college, and your baby was crazy and didn't go to do nothing but whoop on folks and end up getting in trouble. Don't hate on one another. We need to find ways to celebrate. Somebody say celebrate. If you're doing something good, I shouldn't be hating on you. I should be walking up and thanking God for what you're doing. Because if I thank God for what you're doing, God is going to say, look, he or she has enough respect for my, my, prop, my, my, my provision in this person's life. So now I know that they have room for me to bless them too. The key to you being blessed is to stop hating on folks but cooperate with them. Participate in what God is doing. We may not always agree. We may not always even like each other. Y'all know that, right? Baby, what do we do when we check in with each other? What do we ask each other? Do you like me today? Do you like me today? Because, yeah, I love you. I paid all the bills last month. I put a ring on your finger. I take you, I love you, but I don't know if I like you today. And sometimes in a family situation, we don't like one another. 
But when you get rid of all of the mess, all of the drama, all of the turmoil, and it gets down to it, I need you. You need me. We're all a part of what? God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God. It is his will that every need be supplied. How will every need be supplied? He ain't going to drop it out of heaven, but when you need something, Deacon, guess who's going to do it for you? She's going to do it for you. When you need something, sis, guess who's going to do it for you? She's going to do it for you. And tell somebody next to you, I need you to survive. So I'm going to cooperate with you in God's work. A true family communicates. A true family cooperates. And then a true family does this word that's called commiserate. Somebody say commiserate. Can I put it to you in 70s, old school, black, funk, soul music terms? Eddie LaVert said, we cry together. Y'all remember that? <laughs> that? That means that when I'm going through, you're going through. When I see that you have pain in your heart, I have pain in my heart. When your head is hung down low, I'm not going to throw a party and make fun of you. I'm going to reach out to you and commiserate with you. I see that you having troubles. And as my family member, as my loved one, I empathize, I sympathize, I go through with you. And sometimes I may just sit with you in silence and never say a word. You ever had that friend that come over and just sit with you? They ain't got to say nothing. They ain't got to do nothing. But y'all sit together. But then after you sit for about 20 minutes, we got to go get some chicken wings and some cheesecake, baby. Because we didn't sit here long enough. And if we're going to be mad, we may as well be happy while we're going to be mad. I need at least 15 wings from Buffalo Wild Wings and two pieces of cheesecake and a Diet Pepsi. So that if we're going to be here mad together. Forget it. Let's just go to Texas Day Brazil and just get us a, a, a tent and just hang out. Because we get in relationship with one another. And in relationship, you not only get in when people are happy, these are the folks that you can get with when things aren't going right in your life. Can you imagine, come here, Reverend, if two of us are walking together and she's down and I'm down, we may get to a place where she may stop and don't want to go no further and, and I can look at her and say, come on. And we may get a little bit further and I may get to a place where I don't want to get, go no further. She can look at me and say, come on. And when things get rough, I can just reach down on the inside and just say, I feel like going on. I, Reverend, I know we're tired, but I feel like going Oh, those trials come on every Reverend, I feel like going on and, and then she will just come along with me and eventually we'll get where we need to go, somebody say commiserate when my heart is broken and your heart is broken and it seemed like we can't make it can you imagine what it would be like if we took all of my broken pieces and put them together with your broken pieces <laughs> and gave them all to God, how many know that he's the mender of broken hearts? Listen. Over the last few years, Swansboro has had some brokenness. Yeah? Am I telling the truth? Some of you all haven't been in Swansboro in a long time because of some brokenness. Can I tell you a secret that I told them on Wednesday night? I've had some brokenness in my heart. I've had some disappointment in my life. And somehow God has taken a broken preacher and put him in a church with some broken folks. And somehow, when we look at what God is doing, he's taking the brokenness of Swansboro and he's starting to heal it back up. And he's taking the brokenness of Miller and he's starting to heal it back up. And when he takes our two broken pieces and put them together, do you know the angels in heaven are rejoicing? Because we have come together broken. 
But God said, I will heal you of your brokenness. I will put people in your life for you to commiserate with. I will put people in your life that you can talk to, that you can share with, that you can commiserate with, because that is what family does. Somebody say, we cry together. Yeah. Family. We communicate. Somebody say communicate. We cooperate. Somebody say cooperate. We commiserate. Somebody say commiserate. And after we've gone through everything we're going to go through, after we've had our heart broken, uh, after we have tried to do our nunchucks, and you know in life sometimes you, you try to do some things, you may try to do your job, you may try to... Uh, uh, have some friendships and relationships and things look like they're going well kind of like Tom in the video Tom was doing his nunchucks Tom tossed that thing up in the air and hit his finger and he dropped his chuck somebody here has been dropping chucks in your life the things that were supposed to go right went wrong. The relationships that were supposed to be perfect ended up in divorce. Those children that you raised for 18, 19 years of their life, working two and three jobs, providing all their clothes, get grown and say you ain't never done nothing for them. That job that you've given 20 years of your life to, and everybody that you train gets promoted over you and now they're your supervisor and you keep getting left back. You've dropped the chuck. But the Bible says, even a just man falls seven times. But the key to falling, my brothers and my sisters, and the key to dropping a chuck is that if you drop a chuck, somebody say, if you drop one chuck, pick it back up and keep on chucking. Somebody in here needs to understand no matter how many times you've dropped it, you may run into a situation, if you drop one chuck, do what? Pick it back up and keep on chucking. I don't care what the devil does to you. I don't care how many times you mess yourself up. If you drop it, pick it back up and keep on chucking because you're not doing it on your own. Who are you doing it with? You're doing it with your family because a family communicates, a family cooperates, a family communicates, and when they recognize that you picked up a chuck, your family will celebrate with you. Somebody say celebrate. Oh, I wish I had some folk that understood what it means to celebrate. We celebrate one another's accomplishments. We celebrate when God is blessing somebody in the family. We get together and we thank God. And some of us may celebrate in the nightclub. Some of us may celebrate by making our favorite jungle juice punch at home with all of the vodka and liquor that we want to put in it. But some of us like to come to the house of God and give God some celebration praise. I wish I had about 25 folk that wouldn't mind just celebrating with me right now because you recognize that God is doing something in your family you know it might not be working like you want to but turn to somebody and say just keep on chucking yeah tell them keep chucking you might drop one chuck baby but pick it up and do what keep chucking we are all a part of God's family and we need to learn how to celebrate. We celebrate our past. Somebody say our past. Yeah, you might have been through some stuff in your past, but you need to celebrate it. Not because it felt good, but because when you look back over your life and you begin to think things over, the songwriter said, I can truly say that I've been what? Blessed when I think about my past. But then we ought to celebrate our right now. Somebody say right now. We will get so busy looking into the future that we forget that God is working right now. If you got one hand, lift up your hand. If you got two hands, lift them up. Just wiggle your fingers to the Lord and tell him thank you. 
This is a right now moment. I don't care what's going on in your life. Right now, thank him. I don't care what you're going through in your home. Right now, thank him. I don't care what's going on in your marriage. Right now, thank him. Tomorrow isn't promised. So right now, you ought to be thanking him for what he's done. We thank him for our past and we celebrate. We thank him for our present and we celebrate. But then the Bible says it does not yet appear what we're going to be. For we know that when he comes back, that one day we're going to be like him. Do I have any folks that know you're going to be like Jesus one day? You don't have to worry about what's going on tomorrow because when he comes back, I'm going to be just like him. I can celebrate because I think about how good God is and I celebrate because I think about those times when I should have been dead and gone and he kept me. I, I celebrate when I think about the times there was no food on my table and he brought food into my life. I celebrate when I think about time my car wouldn't start but God oh, even gave me a way to get to church. I celebrate when I think about those times when my friends turned their back on me and I didn't have nobody in my life. Slap somebody high five next to you and say let's celebrate let's celebrate God's goodness let's celebrate God's miracles let's celebrate who God is in our life because no matter how many times you fall out with your family how many times you fall out with your loved ones and I can look at some faces right now and know that even though you came to church together that there's some folks hurting right now in your family units. There's some folks sitting right here next to one another that are doing your very best to put a smile on your face right now. And I'm just being honest. But what I need for you to do today, if you don't do nothing else, you need to fix those relationships with your family. Don't just nod at me. Don't just smile at me. You put money in the offering, you sang when the choir sang. Some folks cried at altar call. If you leave here the same way that you came, upset, angry, hurt over that $25 they didn't give you back. Yeah. There's some folks in here right now ain't talked to folks in years over some money. God desires a love relationship with us. They asked Jesus, they said, Lord, what is the greatest commandment? He said, to love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. And then he said, the second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as what? As a play cousin? As a relative? but to love your neighbor as yourself. There's some folks here today and the doors of the church are open. You've been falling out with folks for a long time. I want you to fix that today. Today is family and friends day. And as we open the doors of the church, there may be somebody here who doesn't have a church home You've been looking for a place to join up with. You've been looking for a family to join. We would love for you to join us here at Swansboro. All you got to do is raise your hand. The deacons will come walk with you, or you can just make your way down the aisle. Everyone standing in the house today? Everyone standing. If you desire to be a part of our family, just you can make your way down the aisle or walk with the deacon. They'll come with you. If you already have a church home, but something about this place strikes you and you want to come be a part, praise the Lord. All you got to do is come. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you recognize that he loves you and you want to accept him and you want to be baptized, all you got to do is come down the aisle. We'll receive you. As the choir comes, is there one? He changed my life. 
and now I'm free. Come on, choir. Is there one? The doors of the church are open.